In this video, we're going to be looking at the August 2018 solar stats and also talking about wholesale energy providers. Okay, so I said in the, um, the video where I've had the solar installed here in the UK that I would do some regular monthly updates just to give some insight into if you go ahead and get solar in the UK kind of what performance can be expected because I'm kind of curious over the year if things are going to work out um, as I hope um, and also as I continue to try and you know minimize the costs in terms of electricity and gas um, I've recently made the decision to try out this new wholesale uh, company which is called Outfox the Market um, so I thought I would explain a little bit about that at the same time. So first of all, let's take a look at the stats for August. Now, the first thing to appreciate here is, of course, August is when I had the solar in stores. So it wasn't until the 24th of August, towards the end of that day, um, the kind of solar was installed. So it's kind of not really a great set of stats to, to take you guys through, but at least it is something to kind of get the ball rolling as we go into September, October, November, December, and see really how things go um, uh, across the, the rest of the year into next year. So basically, obviously the last last part of the 24th of August, so it was installed, obviously taking us through all the way to the 31st of August. And in total, this nine kilowatt system I have generated uh, 190.93 kilowatt hours. My personal consumption of that was 88.66 kilowatt hours and I exported 102.27 kilowatt hours. Now, a couple of things to be aware of there is uh, obviously the eddy that I had installed as part of the install isn't working at this stage. Um, so literally all of that is just being straight exported out to the grid. I'm not able to heat hot water or anything um, with that. So that's, that's one of the first things to note. Um, and obviously I'm still waiting um, to find out when the Tesla Powerwall 2 is going to be available to be installed that was ordered in May. So currently hoping kind of by October time that's in, but really depends on how quickly you know, Tesla provide uh, the Powerwalls. So if we have a, look, a quick little look, uh, just some samples uh, of the days over that month. So if we look here on the 31st, uh, if you haven't seen the other videos I've done on the Solar Edge kind of ecosystem and why I love it so much in terms of the monitoring, you can see here that roughly my kind of running consumption uh, is just kind of running the house and the servers that are running all the time is about um, 0.600 kilowatts, so 600 watts is, is the general steady, steady kind of flow. Uh, and obviously then it's kind of get up in the morning, shower, uh, extractor fans are on, you know, kettle's boiling, hair's being dried, obviously not my own. <laughs> um, but you start to get to, to see kind of where we're going. So as I mentioned in previous videos with this uh, system I have here, even though it is a nine kilowatt system, it can only ever produce a maximum of six kilowatts because that's the inverter I have. So during some of the the brighter months, I am going to be experiencing a certain amount of clipping. I can't remember exactly off the top of my head what it was, but it's around 2%. Uh, and you can clearly see that here. So in between, what was it? 9 a.m. and kind of almost all the way through to about 11, we kind of were pretty much smack on six kilowatts constantly for all those hours. Uh, and basically it's, it's constantly kind of clipping and, and heading itself back down because it can't go over the six kilowatts. And what'll be interesting as we move, you know, into the, the poorer uh, daylight days as we move into the winter is, I'm hoping that obviously with a nine kilowatt system I'm under no illusion we're not going to get probably anywhere near six kilowatts, but you know, we're going to be getting kilowatts generated as opposed to just watts. Uh, and so today, 
It is quite a good day, which I was we discussing in September, but right now it's the 4th of September, and I think I generated, um, oh, what was it, about nine kilowatts or something. So, not great, but that's kind of what we can expect. And that covers like most of my day, um, day cost there. So, if we look at some of the other days, just very briefly, uh, again, if this sort of information isn't interesting to you guys, then uh, leave some comments, but just kind of give you a rough idea of kind of how things are working. So just for clarity, red is the consumption where I'm pulling from the grid. Blue is cell consumption. So obviously you see these spikes. So this is where, if the weather's been good, we've been trying to you know, run the washing machine, run the dishwasher, all those things to try and utilize um, some of that solar production. And you can see, you know, we've had a good, good few days there. Um, I think there's a day was it the 24th one was a day that was really bad. So the 25th was a good day, I think. Yeah, so here is an example similar to today, actually. So on the 26th, the weather was really bad here, uh, very cloudy. So we only generated uh, 8.33 kilowatts. And we exported 1.51 kilowatts, whereas if we'd had the eddy working, obviously that would have gone into uh, heating the hot water. So it's going to be interesting to see how things kind of pan out over time. Uh, so I'm still confident with what I'm seeing so far that obviously this is a good decision, which hopefully is a good thing since we've just invested in it. Um, but obviously as energy prices continue to rise, the payback adjusts accordingly. I've submitted my um, fit payment request, which I've got a separate video talking about how that works. Still waiting to get the confirmation back that that's all happening. But yeah, this is kind of kind of where we are for the month uh, of August, again, which I say was only over kind of five or six days. So and that's still pretty good, nearly 200 kilowatts in, in that period of time. So now if we kind of move over to talk about the wholesale side of things. So like I mentioned uh, on Twitter, I, I was trying to decide what to do in terms of my energy provider. So I'm currently coming to the end of uh, a fixed tariff, probably like many people. And I think my current um, price is like 15, maybe it's 13 pence per kilowatt. So not, not great, but still lower than some of the new tariffs that are coming out. Uh, and obviously the plan is for at least half of the year, uh, I'm going to be generating all my own electricity uh, and in, in abundance. Um, but obviously in the winter months, I'm going to have to be uh, you know, pulling from the grid and I'm going to have to be using gas for my central heating. So anything I can do to minimise those costs obviously helps in the pocket. So what I've been looking at is some of these providers that kind of charge essentially a membership fee, which is kind of the equivalent of their standing charge, but they call it a membership fee. So depending... Uh, some of them have like a fixed rate membership fee. Some of them have a, a varying membership fee based on how much energy you use. But their commitment is basically they will sell you the electricity and the gas at the wholesale prices. So the price they paid for it in advance, they will sell on to you. And also they're making their money from that membership fee. So there is a company, well, there's a couple of companies. Um, the one of the first ones I looked at, I think, is called Pure Energy. And I did really like the, the look of them. One of the things that put me off was everything is kind of managed and interacted to via a bot. And so it really wasn't clear about how you can speak to a human if you need to do some follow-up. Now, in all most of my times of being with different varying energy providers, I've had very rare cases where I've had to call someone, but there have been cases. So I still want to have the ability to have a, an interaction with a human, not some bot that's kind of trying to answer some questions and then we'll follow up with a, a chat later. I'm not against that, just sometimes you want to be able to pick up the phone. So I was going to go with them, then I decided I would do a little bit more research. Then I was uh, found out about the, uh, I think it's Octopus, energy i think it was and i heard that they were doing uh, an ev tariff so basically it was more focused at um obviously people that have an ev which i hope to have like a a proper ev in the future i don't class the twizy as a proper ev um basically that was kind of a kind of enhanced 
uh, economy seven type uh, tariff. Uh, and the good thing about that was, I'm just trying to see if I've got the information, excuse me, the information here. Um, but I think it's gonna be something like seven pence a kilowatt uh, for a, a, like four hours in, in the night time or something, which obviously is really good. But when I looked into it, I just, it didn't seem that tariff existed any longer. So perhaps it was only available for a limited period of time. And, it, and obviously they only had a number of slots and when people signed up, it's all gone. So that one was out the window. So then I did some more um, looking around and that's when I came across um, these at Fox, the market dot people. So they buy the, um, the gas and electricity at wholesale rates. They say that um, everything is 100% green. So, I mean, that's great, but let's be honest, most of us are interested in how much is coming out of our pocket, right? If it's green, great, but really what we care about is how much it's costing us. Um, and so basically you put your details uh, in and they give you a quote. And just trying to see if I can find the details here. Uh, I find it. Now, one of the good things um, about uh, this, these companies is that there's no tie-in. So if, you, if it kind of works out it's not saving you money or you're not happy, you can just move somewhere else at um, no fee. So here we can see now on the screen, um, these monthly membership fees start at $6.99 and go all the way up to $53.99, depending on what your annual electricity usage is. So Mine right now, prior to getting solar, is around 7,600-ish um, a year, which puts me into this 1499 bracket. So that's where I'm kind of starting off. I'm hoping that I will come into credit uh, as we move into summer of next year. In the winter, probably not, because my you know, obviously the solar will be helping a, a, a portion in the winter, but I'm not expected to see uh, great savings and as we move into next year hopefully my annual electricity usage will hopefully halve I hope right so we'll see so if it halves then it'll bring me down to like the 10.99 a month membership fee so that'd be kind of cool um, and basically the current um, rates that I've been offered in terms of my deal if I just check my information here is 9.7 pence per kilowatt hour for electricity. That's a standard rate, not it, it's all the time. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that actually. So if you have an electric vehicle, obviously in, when the weather's good, charge it off the solar, but when not, I'm happy to be paying 9.71 pence per kilowatt to charge up that electric vehicle. And um, 3.42 pence per kilowatt uh, hour on the gas. So again, I think that's really good. This is better than my current fixed tariff. Um, and obviously, because these are wholesale costs, they will go up like everywhere else because obviously the wholesale cost goes up or goes down, which probably, let's face it, it's not going to happen. But if it does, then uh, I should benefit from that. So. Yeah. Um, so that's it, basically. So we'll see how things go. So I signed up to these guys uh, on the 31st of August. It takes a couple of weeks um, for things to come through. They've confirmed uh, my direct debit um monthly bill it seems like it's quite common uh that i'll be paying for two direct debits in the one month so i'll be paying a direct debit to uh outfox the market as well as my direct debit payment to my current energy provider and then hopefully things will balance themselves out um obviously you have to um enter in your uh, meter readings into the website so when I go through that process, I'll, I'll share that with you guys probably in next month's uh, update on the sale of performance. But yeah, I definitely think it's worth considering some of these um, wholesale market providers. Obviously, I think some of them do do fixed rates, but in general, it's you know a, a variable tariff. So there's that to consider as well. But the way I look at it is, I think my new tariff I was going on to was 15 or 16 pence per kilowatt. So this is like nearly half that. Um, and so even if those wholesale rates go up, they've got to go up quite a lot until it becomes worse for me. So I figure if I didn't have the solar, I'm, I'm probably maybe saving around 40 pounds a month in terms of electricity and gas combined, 
annually if, uh, if you kind of break it down over the 12 months. So hopefully it's good. Uh, maybe you're already using Outfox and Market and you're happy you've had bad experiences or perhaps you're using someone else and you want to make people aware, please let us know in the comments. Um, feel free to ask any questions about solar production and, and how things work in the comments as well. And uh, that kind of wraps up where we are for August 2018. Thanks for watching this video. A thumbs up would be really appreciated. If you're interested in other geek type videos, please consider subscribing to Spectrum Geeks. Why not also follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. And before you leave, why don't you check out one of these other videos that may be of interest. Thanks again for watching.